Welcome to part 3 of my first trip to Japan. We just got to Tokyo from Yokohama, it's about 6 p.m. and since we live on the Kihabara, we decided to take a walk around. It was a very different vibe, it was very crowded and loud and we were a bit tired, so at this point I even thought I won't like Tokyo as much as I liked Yokohama. Spoiler, I was wrong, but at that time it was very overwhelming. <laughs> also, I never knew, but there's a promoter like every 10 steps. Usually it's a girl who wears like Lolita kawaii clothes and speaks in classic anime voice voice like Onisan, take a look at this cafe or something and not gonna lie it was a bit weird and awkward because they greet you and you have to just ignore them basically but anyway let's start our first full day in Tokyo here we are also staying in Appa hotel um this is our view from the window it's 11th floor not as luxurious as it was in Yokohama this hotel is much smaller but the rooms are pretty much the same size so on our first day we went to Asakusa which is a district in Tokyo with a lot of temples and street food I like this older traditional places way more than business modern areas so it was a very cool place to walk around We were also on a hunt for a strawberry sandwich. Social media makes it seem like you can buy it anywhere, but it was almost impossible to find. They were either sold out by 10 a.m. or you had to take a like, 40 minute ride to a cafe. So we had to compromise and get another fruit sandwich. It was a bit weird at first. Like the bread is basically just white bread. It's not like cake or biscuit. It's not sweeter than any regular white bread. But in Ukraine, many people eat watermelons with bread, me included. So I got used to the weirdness of the taste pretty quick. But overall, it was like three out of five. Then we went to the Imperial Palace, which was already closing by 4 p.m., so we couldn't get inside. But the outside area was also very cute, so we walked around there for a while, and that is it for day one. Day two began in Shibuya. First of all, we went to see the Hachiko statue, and as you can see, there was already a huge line to take a photo, but I was fine seeing it from the side because I haven't seen the movie and I'm not planning to because it's way too sad. <laughs> then we went to a mall nearby to see the famous Shibuya crossing from up above, but it was too early, so there were not as many people as there can be, but it was still pretty cool. Then we stumbled upon a park, I don't even know what it's called, but I remember watching a Japanese listening practice video and a woman was taking a walk in this park, she was telling something about it. I don't remember what exactly, but it must be a well-known place. We ate this weird combination of anchovies with almonds while we were there, and it tasted exactly as it sounds. And there were at least two people doing photo shoots and cosplay, which was fun to see. There are not a lot of trash cans on the streets of Japan, but when there are, they are... <laughs> look at the size of it. After that, we went to Harajuku, which is another place I've dreamt of visiting since I was like 11. I remember cutting out an article about Harajuku fashion from a newspaper, and I actually still have it to this day. Well, sort of. I left it in Ukraine, so I probably won't see it again. But anyway, if I had more money, I would have bought so much stuff here. I love Japanese fashion. But with my budget, here's what I bought. A candied strawberry which was delicious, though for the price, you can buy a pack of fresh ones, I think, so I don't know.
も笑顔も夢の語り方も知らなくて全部君を真似たよ。Okay, day three. First of all, here's how our hotel looks like from the inside. It has this well like structure, and I've never seen a hotel like this. And I love how it looks like when the sun is shining, but it's especially cool when it's raining. And I haven't seen it, but I bet it looks magical when it's snowing. Anyway, our first stop for today is Nezo Shrine, a beautiful place with an unexpectedly big line of the Tori gates and just overall beautiful territory. Our next stop is Gotokuji Temple or a waving cat temple. I heard people say, like, oh, don't believe what you see on social media, there are not that many cats. So I expected to see like 50 cat smacks or something. But oh boy, there are so many cats. <laughs> they're not all over the territory, they're all in one place, but it looks amazing. I loved it. Also, when you buy a cat for yourself, they give you a printout with the story of the temple, which is very cute. I won't be reading you the whole thing, but here's the picture if you want to read it. But the gist is, there was a very poor monk who had a cat whom he treated like a child, he shared his food with it and stuff. And then one day the monk said, if you're grateful to me, bring some fortune to the temple. And a couple of months later, the monk sees five or six samurais on his doorstep, which like people never came to his place, so he was surprised. And the samurai said that they were about to pass in front of the gate, but they saw a cat who lifted his arm and started waving waving and waving at them, so they were surprised and intrigued and they decided to come here and rest. And then the weather got bad, so they stayed for longer and they heard the monk preaching his sermons and they were delighted and they loved it and they decided to donate huge rice fields and croplands and made this temple grand. And when the cat passed away, the monk established a grave for the cat and blessed it, so now everyone can remember this episode. Honestly, when you read the story while actually being there, it can make you quite emotional. <laughs> oh, also, Peter Pan and Marcy are now living in Japan and I remembered watching their vlog from like like five years ago or something and I thought oh it would be so cool to meet him in Japan now that they are living here and then I opened Instagram and Felix posts a story about how they were in this temple yesterday and they made little cute hats for their cats and then he also posts a photo with Mr. Beast who was also in Japan and then Dan and Phil posted photos from Japan and Harry Styles was also here around this time and it was a strange feeling like they were all so close yet so far away <laughs> I never expected to be in the same place with all those people, and especially this place being Japan. But anyway, I haven't met any of them, obviously. The weather today was horrible. The rain and wind were so strong, my shoes were soaking wet after the first five minutes outside. So today we decided to spend the day just walking around anime shops and then go to round one stadium. I expected to see a lot of stuff with many, many different animes, no matter when they came out, but there were mostly the new ones and the ones that were the most popular right now, which makes sense. <laughs> but at that time, I hadn't seen any of them and I didn't want to buy something I don't know if I like. Does it make sense? But now that I watched them, it breaks my heart <laughs> seeing all this merch and not being able to buy it anymore, especially the Tokyo Revengers one. Ugh. Now that I think about it, by the way, there were a lot of merch with Tom and Jerry. I don't know why them specifically, but I'm not complaining, they're cute as heck.
So, we finally arrived to Round 1 Stadium, which is a huge complex with a lot of different activities like bowling, karaoke, darts, billiards, mini video games, arcades, tennis, baseball and a lot more. So we decided to start out with this moving baskets basketball and I immediately got hit in the face, which spoiled the mood a little bit. It felt like I got a concussion. My brain was shooketh. So yeah, probably don't film in there. I found out about this place from a TikTok, by the way, which said it cost like $5 for three hours, which is just not true. It was about $25 closer to 30, but it was still worth it. It's a very cool place with a lot to do. 